that you see this is just interview for is our society in Poland uh, who are interested in mysteries of the world, uh, many dif discoveries and connected with the with the science also. So I would like to introduce uh, today um, Klaus Dona, one of the uh, brave men in the in, in archaeology society who who don't give up and still searching mysteries of of the world many many artifacts and uh, and he tried to uh, connect all the puzzle and he, as you see is still is, we're still searching uh, because uh, today what our school teach us is not a hundred percent what what the world really is isn't it Klaus? Hello, Gregor. Mm, hello, nice hello. talking to you. Nice talking to you as well. You wrote many books about uh, archaeology discoveries, uh, all different uh, about different artef artifacts, and, and you still you still uh, working on something, yeah? Oh yes, I'm at the moment or already several years in Southeast Asia, and I'm looking for traditional places. We found already two and also mainly looking for artifacts which are showing us a lot about the past of our history. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I sent you the, um, but I, you still, you still, can you see that the, all the ancient civilization, there was something which is not really uh, what they teach us at school. I mean, the, the civilization, they tried to force us that, that there was a, uh, primitive people but uh, when you uh, traveling around the world you've been almost on every continent can you see the technology was more advanced uh, mathematics it was m much more advanced in some civilizations so is something not right if we're using a, a mathematical system based on 10 and they used uh, 12 15 16 or 60 uh, mathematical techniques to calculate uh, all different Mm, astrology, astronomy, uh, science. So, so how 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 it's uh, happened that we're using today so simple uh, digital zero one uh, techniques. It, so you can you can't even divide ten by three because you everything what left after dot it's uh, the computer has to use as a mistake. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I, that's what I think already since uh, many years, mm -hmm. a few years after starting looking for unexplainable artifacts, I found out that uh, there must have been several times uh, very big global catastrophes which uh, wiped out most of the living people and everything started from the beginning because if you think, um, if we would lose, uh, if we would lose uh, the the electricity, yeah. uh, how quickly, or a lot of our knowledge would disappear, and mm. that's why mm -hmm. uh, the most interesting artifacts I found were always or mainly stone made out of stone, because stone is the only material yeah. which does not change the surface. So if we would have a global catastrophe uh, after 100, 500, 1,000 years, you would not find anything anymore from our high technology mainly. And uh, all the knowledge would be gone. And those people were very intelligent, I think, and they used some of the most important information uh, cutting into stones in the hope that one day somebody will find it and might be able to translate it. And that's why I think from old artifacts, we could learn most probably a lot for our future. Yes, and uh, uh, the nowadays they teach us that the caveman, they use stone because he was the primitive man. But uh, <clears throat> from the other side, uh, when, we, when we see all uh, based on, on electronics, uh, Mm, processors based on uh, which is ve very <clears throat> uh, 
connected with the some uh, sun's uh, radiation. So after bigger radiation, everything disappear. All information <clears throat> is disappeared. Just so the the people in the past they believed that if they could code it pyramids or they, they, they coded some stones, it, the information go can can be passed for the future generation and this is it, the intelligence, not like they try to follow us that Fred Flintstone was driving like the car from the stone from the stone and everything was like a cave caveman a technology. <laughs> so so yeah. we so uh, you definitely know much more about this because when you going deep deeply into this artic, artica, artifacts when you show me the other day um uh, the instrument from litit uh, how they how they use this instrument for for example um, when the when they carry the baby and and all was so specific and this technology can't be copied so fast today I think they used some of those instruments for a primitive uh, or not so uh, qualified uh, people to show them on the, the artifact how to use it and for what to use it. I mean, not only the design was fantastic, but also the idea behind to to put the the using information already into the artifact i mean that's great that's great helps a lot especially if people who don't know about this they can see uh huh this is for helping the birth of a baby or this is if there's a a problem at the time of the birth how to cut uh the uh, the mother's line connection with the baby if it's for example around the the neck it could kill the baby so use mm -hmm. this knife to cut it and save the life i mean they they these artifacts for me we had them in vienna and we had research on it even now the the scientist who did the research announced that she told me already at that time that those are fakes that's not true that's not true because i had several people with me when we did the research uh, so there is something going on if you come out with information which do not fit oh, yes, the yes. <laughs> science then you are a faker or you you just make tricks to to get money from the people or all these uh bad stories but i don't mind we continue our work and finally the final result will show who was the real idiot yes i uh, you're aquarius so i'm aquarius also so this is the specific sign actually because he's he's his what he, his life is mostly against the system uh, but but clever in the clever way aquarius always uh, see the details and he can he always check because this is the uh, sign who who is connected with the sentence i know uh, so so even if, if the um, societies tell you that you are wrong and you you know that you are not wrong <clears throat> you still will be searching and, and, and <laughs> digging and all these artifacts. So this is typical for Aquarius, what I know. Uh, so don't worry about this uh, because we know <clears throat> how the system works. Actually, our era, uh, what, what we see today, the consciousness rising uh, so fast. So the people uh, is going from this era of Pisces, which is connected to, I believe, to the <clears throat> era of Aquarius, which is connected to the sentence, I know. That's why more and more people is gonna be asking the question into the science also, because uh, uh, even the scientists, as you told me, uh, Joachim Zilmer, uh, your friend, uh, the scientist who wrote many books about the uh, one of the book it's a, a mistake of um, forgot the, the title. I tell you in a second. Um, so he he proving in these books that uh, the calculation of the co uh, in the coal mines is not really like 500 million of years, uh, but it could be much earlier. <clears throat> so this is one of the option also 
what we we can't really trust all this uh, age dating calculation because as as some scientists know um, that there is no hundred percent age dating uh, system uh, what we can base on uh, so <clears throat> I send you even this uh, mummies in Russia in Siberia what found what they found dated nine hundred years old but she was found in the in the coal mines uh, in eighty meters deep. Uh, underground, uh, so this they didn't want to really check the dated on base on comas if the if the mummies was nine hundred years old. No, so this kind of artifacts is gonna be one of the proof that is yeah, that's right. Doctor Joachim Zilmer, he wrote several books. I was with him together already on uh, a South America trip. He is a very serious man. And he thinks that the age dating of the geological formations worldwide could be much younger than the geologists are saying. And I'm also wondering, we don't know anything about our culture or our ancestors longer than 6,000 years, the oldest civilizations. Yeah. And then we don't know many things uh, again. But how can you say this coal formation is 64 million years, this stone is 320 million years, and so on? I mean, it's very difficult. I think, uh, yeah, I'm not a geologist, but uh, in my mind, I think it's very difficult to find out really how old are the different geological structures. Yes, the Joachim Silmer, I, I forgot his uh, the name of the book, but there was the Darwin mistake Darwin's uh, mistake yes yes Darwin's yes. mistakes uh, it's a very good book yes so this uh, because we remember we remember all michael cremo bestseller uh, who shows uh, many many artifacts for example the golden uh, chain or glasses uh, uh, sticked with the with the cow coal mine in the coal mine so he dated the the stone the stone was 500 million years that mean yeah. uh, that the people lived that that time but but we have to use that all different kind of pressure temperature because we don't know that what what really happening uh, on a regular basis on on earth it can change this uh, structure even for a few days because we remember the uh, the mammoths in the siberia what they found underground frozen uh, animals with the grass with the fresh grass in the stomach so so something happened uh, also what we have to use and me and my friend what we try to uh, Arthur Lala, Franz Zalewski, uh, try to uh, we searching still some artifacts that something's going on on a regular basis on Earth. Uh, and this shows that these resets, uh, what we call, uh, it can be every 676 years, uh, and last last reset, uh, it could be it could be done uh, on the uh, in. Uh, 1348, which uh, it was the fa known as a Juma, as a, as a illness, as a, a Juma. So the Wikipedia tells that died 80% people in Europe died. Uh, yeah. But th th today there is some scientists, but they prove that it can't be just uh, Juma as a as a uh, illness. It could be some connected with radiation, what could be a very short time, some radiation or maybe and something something happened that the people uh, have been dying in two, three, three days and population was reduced. Uh, so it when you every seven hundred years, it's something really happened on Earth, and that in these dates, uh, new religion starts uh, actually new. Everything from from scratch and the old ancient technology or information is is getting forgotten and and because though, of course it's connected with the quantity of people. <clears throat> so as we said on the beginning, when when we use uh, when we would have a problem with electricity, it just takes uh, one to three weeks uh, because people think that they can live <clears throat> much yeah. much longer, but uh, nobody experienced this before. But uh, the city is connected with the fresh water, with uh, with the food, with everything actually. So all this kind of panic could really, really change the world very fast. So we are not prepared for this. 
and yeah. uh, uh, and that's why it's so important what we're talking about uh, today and your work also and uh, and other um, scientists because as we say if we don't know the history we can't really know what can happen uh, in the future and many civilization indian civilization they was talking about some prediction they actually knew something that something happened in the past that's why yeah. they wanted to live based on this codex uh, <clears throat> because of course today there is no any clever codex what we can keep yeah what do you think klaus about this yeah i think we should go more to the nature back to the nature yeah. uh, we are destroying our own territory worldwide i mean that swedish girl is very very good activate the climate change and all this but uh, it starts with ourselves already we are just using electronic new technology everything like this we forget the real exception and appreciation of our nature and you can believe me i'm every day in the morning leaving into the jungle and coming back in the late afternoon and i tell you i get so much energy there and mm -hmm. it's so beautiful it's a kind of dangerous but it's beautiful and i appreciate every day here i can tell you i i, I just had this january my 70th uh, birthday but i never ever feel like uh, 70 years old mm -hmm. i mean i feel just like 30 40 years yeah you look uh, you look like I, you lose i can't really if somebody New Klaus Donna, uh, when vi visiting Poland or other countries, mm, I really wouldn't uh, recognize you if I would uh, hear your voice, actually. <laughs> because you definitely <laughs> lose 10, 15 kilos. That, that's sure. <laughs> oh, I lost quite a few kilos and it's good so, because it's not easy to climb into the tunnel systems. And so, yeah, our deepest point is 66 meter and you know how many build, uh, story building that would be and it's, it's, <laughs> so you the way, <laughs> so you, you the way to go very deep <laughs> That's oh yeah because <laughs> the real old history is very deep underground yes yes that is one yeah, of that, the points that is it. one of the real important points and you yeah. have to follow the signs and everything and then you get uh, the real real interesting places yeah, that's what we discovered here with French archaeologists in Poland. Many uh, tunnels under, under not only Poland. This is actually in Austria, in Germany, Czech Republic. Actually, is, uh, you definitely know that this history about the underground cities, underground tunnels, is is from every continent. But we sp uh, we focus on 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 the Polish uh, tunnels, and in every these places today is is churches churches and and it's really difficult to to go and and, and check uh, these subjects but uh, uh, but this underground uh, tunnels and history of our grandfather mother they telling this that the uh, that was connection between some cities uh, 200 kilometers 300 kilometers they could they could drive with uh, uh, different uh, with, with the horse uh, underground uh, so something really happening uh, because who who dig these tunnels and when this is the the main question uh, so that would be the reason why people would hide underground and uh, so we can yeah. in we can um, say that they didn't hide by the flood because they didn't afraid the flood because the flood uh, of course is not uh, what uh, would they would hide uh, this is connected some something was coming from from the air i think uh, because this is only one possibility to explain yeah but uh, concerning the tunnel system in june last year i attended a conference in vienna mm -hmm. and one of the very interesting speakers and i knew him already long time before dr heinrich kusch yes, yes. he is professor he is a, a geologist and he is a researcher in tunnel, underground tunnel systems. And he pronounced first time in a conference officially as a, as a high educated scientist, 
he said that he has the approval that some tunnel systems in Austria mm -hmm. are made with a high technology which we do not have yet. He has the scientific approval that this, these tunnels were made with a high technology which we do not have yet today because he used industrial magnet and he mm -hmm. could get some small metal uh, splits and he did the material check and micro electronic microscopical check. This is a kind of very, very special metal and that is the approval that those tunnels were done with, with high techno technology instruments. And he also said that he can prove that those tunnels are older than 10,000 years. So now we are talking officially mm -hmm. about a using of a very high technology which we do not have even in our days and this about 10,000 years before our time. So these were not, our ancestors were not the, 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 the dummy people hunting and, and living from today until tomorrow. We, and that's the approval, what I always said, that there, there were several times high civilizations on Earth. Yes, yes, that's, and that's uh, approval. Yeah, and those yeah. those uh, approval you cannot find half meter, one meter under the soil, never ever. These approvals you have to go really deep underground, very deep underground. In in Turkey there is some uh, underground cities what have uh, many many yeah. levels. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, the, the, this this really shows how people. Uh, could could leave them many many years and they have a system of uh, fresh air as a uh, professor yeah. Kush uh, proved this that today it would be hard to to build something to that the, the, the air condition uh, could be spread a hundred of meters uh, uh, so this type kind of technology even even you can hear the the catastrophe of uh, sorry the <clears throat> fire on uh, Notre Dame. Uh, yeah. in France. So today they're saying that it would be very hard to rebuild this because this uh, Gothic technology, what, what was built before, not to today, and maybe, maybe secret society would know <laughs> how to build uh, based on the golden ratio, but everything was built on the golden ratio. So today, you know, like many scientists laughing at this, what is golden ratio, but the golden ratio is, is in nature. So they, they build this based on on nature that's why it was stable that's why it was it could uh, uh, stay there many many years so uh, so also the <clears throat> underground tunnels is definitely been used by the next <clears throat> civilization like the roman empire also used this uh, tunnels uh, so today it looks like the secret society they knew about some artifacts they knew about some <clears throat> technology from the past we know the Leonardo da Vinci, we know any other famous people, but uh, there is some information that they, this kind of people, they've been connected with secret society so they could get this information and the knowledge into the world. So today we, we call them genius, but to be true, it's, it's hard to be 100% sure if, if this is this this knowledge is from their head or they they just get this information from the secret society but it could be like this also yeah and even mm -hmm. there is more and more confidence that in the past we had visitors from outer space here you remember uh gregor a, a, a few years ago about five years ago I received some photos from Mexico with a very strange artifacts. And altogether, I received about 2,000, over 2,000 photographs of very strange artifacts found by a farmer on his ground in a tunnel system. And he was so scared 
that when the government will get the knowledge about this finding, they might uh, close his territory and uh, they might take the artifacts. So it was very hard for me to get the right connections. Uh, and then I received some pieces. We could do some uh, checking here in Vienna. I sent the artifacts back. I should have been there last year already and this year also, but I could not because I have to be here to, to finish my work here first. Uh, and I decided about four years ago with uh, Nassim Haramein uh, mm -hmm. to show in uh, a conference in Germany first time some of those photographs. And I asked not doing any f uh, filming or making photos, but one guy did uh, a video about it and he put it into the internet. You cannot imagine what happened. Thank you. Thank you. So um, Klaus came to me with these pictures a few months ago and uh, kind of threw me for a loop. I was just amazed to find these pictures. Um, these pieces, um, the are the first uh, pieces I've seen in archaeology. So, um, you know, here in this piece, for instance, first of all, the piece um, look very much like the vehicle that is uh, portrayed on it. So the das piece Objekt itself... Schaut aus wie ein UFO. Mm. And uh, the, uh, the object is obviously arriving in the solar system. We see planets around it, the sun here. Uh, it's flaring quite strongly. Uh, das Objekt, das man hier sieht, was könnte ein UFO sein, uh, kommt in das uh, Solar Sonnensystem. Very, very distinct uh, physics uh, that we know of. This is very much a description of a, what we call a wormhole in physics, which is a consequence of Einstein field equations. Uh, was man hier rechts sieht, ist uh, a wissenschaftlich uh, bewiesenes. Yes, and that was uh, first uh, worked out by John Wheeler. And, um, you know, the, what's really remarkable here, first of all, you know, these pieces, usually in many of the pieces that um, Klaus and I have been looking at for some 20 years or 25 years, you know, you, there's a certain amount of interpretation that has to be done, a certain amount of decoding. Uh, so, basically... Um, you know, usually there's a certain amount of interpretation that has to happen, but here there's no interpretation needed. It's pretty clear. This is obviously a spaceship that is coming out of what we call a wormhole. And um, what was really exciting for me is that, um, you know, in standard physics, um, when we came up with the mathematic for a wormhole, but there is one possibility, and that is that spin at high velocity can open the mouth of a wormhole. And so basically, here you can see that the wormhole is spinning, and that is opening a mouth for the spaceship to come out. Here we have an even most more amazing piece. And you know, you, you are all some of the first ones to see these pieces. The Aston. And um, you, you can see, again, we have a solar system. Um, here is a planet with an atmosphere. And this uh, planet with an atmosphere must be the Earth. We, you know, we can assume it's the Earth, but it's definitely a planet with an atmosphere. There is a ship here and a ship here. And uh, there's a nice little blow up of what's inside the dome of the ship, in case you're confused about what it is. <laughs> and uh, this is as well, you know, you can see the steps here, typical of, um, you know, pyramidal uh, step pyramids. And here we can see that this ship is following a comet that is coming at the Earth. Or at least at the planet that's here. And you can see that this UFO, right, uh, which you can see is moving at high velocity, is doing something to uh, push the comet. 
So this could be a representation of an event uh, either in our past or in our future. Okay, so here we have other pieces. Again, we have a solar system. The sun is very clear here. We have a planet with an atmosphere. We have another planet here, and we've got an ascending um, ship here, another one down there, and then one inside the sun flare. And uh, I, as you will see in my conference, I'm going to show you the mathematics and the reason why um, it may be appropriate to think of the sun as a doorway to travel through our, solar, uh, through our galaxy and even in our universe. And the ancient people always called it a doorway. Okay. So here we see a UFO coming out of the sun. Uh, it's very specific. Even the really UFO fans called Nassim and me a uh, fake, uh, tricky, uh, bad guy and everything. <laughs> so I always say a negative thing could be finally a positive thing. What happened? This video was viewed by many Mexicans. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly from different provinces, I received information and photos. Yeah, our ancestors, they have the same artifacts already since long, long time. That means now all over Mexico, the indigenous are coming now out with the old artifacts, which they have already since hundreds and hundreds of years in their ownership. And you can see big, big uh, statues made out of jade and you know that working on jade is very very difficult because jade is very hard showing some extraterrestrials and uh, ufos and all this so that means and uh, a russian colleague he went there and he could take a few artifacts with him to russia and uh, they did laboratory checks and everything age dating is between Eight and twelve thousand years. Again, it, you're gonna send me you know, this class the picture to the interview, so I I add to the audience so they can see this uh, picture of these artifacts. This I, I will send you a few. Yes, of mm -hmm. course, of course, Gregor. Yeah, the, because it's always better to show artifacts that, and pictures because then you understand what you talk about. Yes, not? yes. So the yeah. ancient knowledge actually is connected connected with the, some, I don't know, for, for 100% the civilization from space on from underground cities, because we can also be the civilization underground if we, if we not discovered this, but the many scientists now they prove also that the earth can be empty inside. Because yeah. as, as you see, Nassim Haramein is a very clever man, one of the, he he used uh, he specialized also in gold, golden ratio on many ancient artifacts. So it's good that you work with him, because yeah. he's also an uh, anti-system uh, man who who is not really um, like other people who we pay you to dig on the left side of the pyramid, but you can't dig on the right side. <laughs> 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 oh, but yeah. this guy is saying. The scientist said, I want to dig on the right side because I, I, I have a feeling that this something is hidden on the right side. No, no, no. We give you one million euro, uh, uh, but you need to dig on the, on the left side. <laughs> so this kind yeah, of, yeah. Uh, this kind of ir 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 irrational uh, thing is today is common, very common. Uh, that's why it's important that you doing your job and asking Haramein and other people like Professor Kush or Joachim Zimler, Zimler. because, because uh, we need to um, tell to the people that if they saying that, uh, because Darwin actually, he was uh, uh, impressed of the Vedic, uh, uh, Vedic calendars uh, who really proved that the words has, is very ancient. But if they make mistake, like uh, Sitchin could make mistake with the, uh, Sumerian calculation with the third block of SAR. And when he used uh, one year of this one block instead of one day, that, that the calculation would be 500 millions of years. 
Uh, but yeah. in my opinion, he made this mistake. That's why all other scientists base uh, the, this dating. Uh, mm. So this could be much earlier. And and this ancient civilization like is is written on the stone in the caves. It really shows some uh, flying object. It really shows some technology. Because how you can explain? Uh, technology written on the stone like 5,000, 10,000 years ago, uh, it's really hard to explain what, what is exactly mean this, this picture on the, yeah. on this. Uh, uh, just, so, just about one week ago, I received from Venezuela very interesting photos. I sent you some uh, oh. with the unknown writing also on big rock unknown writing and they found walls stone walls in the jungle of venezuela that means we are talking here also about a civilization thousands of years before our time so in these days every time more and more uh, news are coming out i received yesterday a very interesting video from <laughs> russia about the huge stone walls they found in the Ural, ah. in the Ural mountains, with stone blocks much bigger than anywhere found on the earth until now in Russia. In Nobody Russia. knew until now anything about it. No? There could be many good artifacts in Russia, especially in Siberia, Ural, because yeah. as you see today, the this this tree the, this is new trees actually it's not very old trees this also it could be some catastrophe in siberia would destroy a lot of uh, cities uh, what the cities could be underground but we know to both that uh, in this kind of territory today if we can't see many people it doesn't mean then in previous in the ancient time it could be some uh, civilization cities uh, technology but Everything is underground. That, that's really, that's for sure. And it could be very nice if you, if we can show this picture, the new discoveries. And, <clears throat> and also, that is the question: if the blocks is huge, who uh, who built this uh, really? Because you also uh, is you have no clouds uh, that uh, you have many artifacts. You visit many places uh, with discoveries uh, connected with discoveries of the giants. Uh, giants huge uh, people or uh, humans or not humans uh, with the the with the tall like seven seven meters twelve meters high seven point six meter in ecuador but mm -hmm. we have also here giant footsteps which are approximately the same size uh, which also pointed on uh, six to seven meter giants who lived here on the Philippines and we have a lot of stories here in the Philippines about the giants but also about the little people. Little people everywhere all over the world. You have legends, you have mythology yeah. and the interesting thing is to study the mythology, the old uh, elders stories because they always have a very high percentage of reality in all the mythology, in all the legends. Yes, I'm always saying that if in our ancestors, if they want to pass some information to their children, uh, the, the mythology is not the cartoon, like people think that this is uh, to tell the children to, to go sleep, yeah? No. There's uh, information, important information. They wouldn't pass the information to future generation, to the son, like a father, passing information to the daughter or son. This, this is in, in important information. They want to spread this information for future. But not wait, that wait somebody... a moment. I have to stop the dogs <laughs> okay. because right, the, uh -huh. the, the fence and they are very good protecting. So uh -huh. oh, nobody is allowed <laughs> to come in without me. <laughs> so, so your fans are coming to Philippines to, to speak with you also. Is Thank it... you, pardon? Is it is it your fans coming to Philippines to see you? I came in June. It will be four years already. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And I didn't want to come to the Philippines. 
no way. I have no, I had no idea. <laughs> and one friend of mine told me he would like to see a very famous healer here uh -huh. in our town. Very famous, great healer. When I come and to you, we can go yeah. together to this to this healer. To oh yes, this sure. Time. Because uh, I had my best experience when uh -huh. I came with my friend, and he he asked me, please, I don't speak English, so can you help me? I invite you, and I did. I said, no, what do I do in the Philippines? No? And you see, finally I came here, and I'm here already now, close to four years. So it had to be that I come here, and I, I never knew that there are so many things here to find, to discover. It's it's unbelievable, really. But but when I see you are Uttarashada, the moon in between Capricorn and Aquarius, that is this is this is the sun constellation is always going to the warmer places the sun is heal is healing you as a, as a as a sun uh, so it's good for your health and good for your mind and for everything yeah. actually so, <laughs> so in i love the warm temperature i love it in in vedic <laughs> astrology on uh, you have 28 constellation moon constellation so like month has 28 days so uh, there is only three moon sign, Uttara Shada, Uttara Falguni, and Kritika. This is the sun constellation. They always go into warmer places because this sun is a healer for them. So when you see on my, my wall on the back, there's a yeah. sun symbol. Sun symbol is, is, is going with me many, many years. Now I didn't know before why I hanging the sun symbol. It's just a sun constellation. <laughs> Yeah. So, so it's going very, very warm places. People uh, have a specific, uh, a specific character also. So it's it's like this. Discoveries of the world is also connected to the sun constellations. So as you see, uh, we both uh, searching, 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 and there is still not enough because there are many oh, yeah. artifacts going every day. Uh, so it would be great if you send us the picture what you get from Venezuela and Mexico. And also yes. in Philippines, because Philippines, this territory is for me. I see the connection between Hawaiian uh, kahunas, the healers, and also Philippines uh, healers. This kind of knowledge is very ancient. Today, yeah. mm, I really want to go to Hawaii to to speak with the kahuna healers, and also in Philippines when I visit you, as we agreed, <clears throat> then we can go to these healers because they're using also some mysterious of how to cure people oh yeah oh yeah because he is operating with his hands yes. and uh, i had a problem in austria before i came to the philippines always i get some pain in my heart region and i went to the doctor hospital made a very very good check and the result was no problem everything is okay so when I went with my friend to the healer and he operated my friend and then he looked at me and I told him, no, I don't need uh, because I'm healthy. He <laughs> pointed my heart and he said, your main artery to the heart is closing slowly uh -huh. and in about six months you, you will get a heart attack. And then I said, ooh. And I was laying down and he operated my heart with his own hand with the fingers. And since then, no more pain, no more problem and very good health. Yes. Unbelievable. Yes, we will yes. meet. When you come here, Gregor, definitely. There is yes. another one about six, 60 to 70 minutes uh, from where I'm living. There is another one, very famous one, we can also visit. And what he told me after operation, he said, now the best for you would be drinking the cobra blood. Ah, yes. And I was drinking the cobra blood. Mm -hmm. And about four years ago, I had white, white hair, completely white. And after a few months, my hair color returned to the former color. That means... It, in, it, medical, it, it has, mm -hmm. in medical it astrology, has, yeah. 
in medical astrology, you have a free sign of Capricorn, Aquarius, and uh, and the Sagittarius. All all three is closing together. Yeah, they both very close. They this yeah. the border of Sagittarius, Capricorn, and Aquarius. So you ascendant Sun, Moon, they are free. But Rahu, which is the North Node, is in the fifth house of of lion and the lion in the medical astrology is rules the heart the rules the heart so that means that you will lose also the mineral sidica which is very important for for your heart for veins so the sidica it's like the veins are built from 70 percent from uh, from sidica based on sidica so this is also important mineral but the previous minerals i sent you this is for what the capricorn losing for for knees so the knees problem, yeah. you can probably it is like 80% that will have problem with knees. This is because the people don't know about these minerals, what losing based on a sign, what influence them. Also- you are right, because sometimes I have a problem with my right knee. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I appreciate your great knowledge about that. <laughs> we have to talk a lot. You have to come here that 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 we can talk about many many things. Okay? Yes, yes, that's that's for sure, Klaus. That's I will come and we're gonna um, searching new artifacts also. Um, and also, I would like to ask you if you can uh, tell us a bit more uh, because I forgot to ask about these giants. Uh, Skeletons. So you you discovered them even on Philippines, the the, the footprint. Uh, yes, in a river, mm-hmm. and you have to wait always until the very very dry season that there is no more water. Then you can see also footprints. Oh. And uh, I know the area uh, where there is a 3.6 meter skeleton. They they found it in a mountain cave. They brought it to a museum. And two times the showcase where the skeleton was inside exploded. So they got so scared. So they brought the skeleton back to the cave in the mountain. So I know that area, but it is very, very difficult uh, to go there. Uh But one day I will do it. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, You've been uh, both with Michael Tallinger, uh, see the, the big footprint in South Africa. Oh yeah, I was mm-hmm. there with Michael Tellinger, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Mr. Donner, what do you have to say about this? What it's amazing, you... I saw several pictures uh, before. There were also some scientists here, like uh, Professor James Hurtak, and uh, he checked uh, this footprint very carefully. And uh, he said, and he told me also that uh, this is not uh, done, uh, artificial done, this is a real human footstep. And the size is about uh, 120 centimeters, and that giant uh, would be uh, tall around seven, seven, seven and a half meters, and uh, that gets a connection to the giant bones from Ecuador. This giant there also had the size of about seven and a half meters. I'm glad uh, you brought that up because I was going to ask you, they, there's obviously an, an exciting link between this footprint and the giants that you found in, in South America or in Ecuador. That's right. yeah. yes. All right, now, if you could just stand over there and point out a few things that, that might be of interest to you. Um, yeah, that for me, very interesting is that uh, if you step uh, into a soft uh, mud, automatically the mud at your teeth, uh, at your uh, toes, will go out like here, and it looks uh, really like someone was stepping into a soft mud. The important thing, just to explain as well, we know this is not mud. This is granite. For those that are wondering, it is granite. There's no doubt about it. How this happened remains a mystery because many people will argue that it's impossible to leave a footprint in granite because where and how granite is formed. And just to also tell the people the history of this footprint, it was discovered in uh, 1912 by a farmer uh, in the area called Stoffel Kutsia who was hunting. And he found it in those days, this was a very remote part of South Africa and the Transvaal 
and he found it while hunting and to to find something like this in the middle of he's also very interesting yes he, he, he's uh, he's uh, uh, he's discovered also many artifacts with the kind of stone what in south africa pounds, the, the like a hundreds and thousands of uh, stone circles which have a different frequency which uh, get uh, warm in the night time. Mm -hmm. That's why the, the animals, they went inside the stone circles for sleeping because of course the earth inside was much warmer than mm -hmm. outside. And that was the reason why the, the South African archeologists said that all those stone circles were cow storages, animal storages, uh -huh. which is definitely impossible because <laughs> where would have been the people for hundred thousands of stone circles, how many animals would that have been? And the next question, where were the people? I mean... Uh, animals only can feel the energy. Animal, the feeling of and the smells is seven times stronger and the energy, they feel the energy. We can nobody t teach us before how to uh, feel different kind of frequency and energy. Yeah. Uh, that's why yeah. we don't know nothing about this, but the frequency, everybody, every from every people has different frequency. That's why uh, what they make the, the, the cycles with the stones, they make this to, uh, to resonate on the specific uh, frequency. Like for example, your heart problem, uh, this is 528 hertz, because 528 hertz is connected with the heart, so they can cure the heart. Other people have different frequency also, so this could be uh, also connected with, because the frequency is the information also for the uh, for, for environment, so uh, you can code it in the stones, you can code it not only artifacts as a picture, but you can also code it frequency, which is the information because the frequency is the same as light, because uh, we can't see this, but uh, manipulate frequency, then uh, the people uh, are ill or, or can recover from the illnesses also. And, and the animal definitely feels this, that's for sure. <laughs> there are a lot of very interesting music instruments in uh, South America. For example, in Colombia, uh -huh. Terracotta from from uh, north of Colombia, mm -hmm. with uh, I sent you some pictures about yes. those flutes. Very interesting because especially how the 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 figurines are dressed. Very interesting, and then some photos of stone flutes found in Bolivia, and when I had the exhibition Unsolved Mysteries 2001 in Vienna. Mm -hmm. we found a professional pan flute player from Bolivia. And I had two music, top music professors. Uh, they are professors at the Music Academy in Vienna. And they came and he came also. And it took him long time to get the right sound out of these flutes. 
And you know why? Because we found out later that some of the flute holes are connected on the bottom. Two, two flute holes mm -hmm. are connected on the bottom. So now for me the question is, how can you, with simple instruments, how can you make a deep flute uh, music hole and then you make a turn to the other hole? How can you do that? <laughs> That's well, a big question. The, the, so, the... And then we found, uh, we had also some, from the same civilization, we had some stone masks. And I was wondering, when I was trying to look through the eyes, mm -hmm. I could not look through both eyes because ah, the, the distance <laughs> of the eyes were too far away. And later, I received photos of 2.6 meter skeletons from Bolivia, 2.6 meters. So, of course, the head was much bigger than our head. You see here, uh, on your right side, a normal human man with about 180 centimeters, and next to him, you see skeletons where we found documents or stories or legends about giants. The one before the last one on the la left side is about uh, seven meter 60. When I had the exhibition Unsolved Mysteries in Switzerland, we did a model of a 7.6 meter skeleton, which you can see part of it here. And you can see that the big man even didn't reach the knee of this skeleton. Here we have a graphic of uh, the, uh, the South African petrified stone uh, footprint. And we did a measurement of a normal man foot size of 1.7 meter. He would have a shoe size of number 41. And on the, on the other side, you see this guy's shoe size 177. And we measured out that he might have had 1.6 ton of weight. Uh, this is a skeleton of one of the giants they found in, in the jungle of Bolivia in some caves. The size of every skeleton was about 2.5, 2.6 meters. The interesting thing on these skulls is that the jaw is very much stronger than our jaw. The size, of course, with 2.6 meters, they have to have a bigger skull. But, but for me, the, much, the most interesting thing is that we, as Homo sapiens sapiens, we have the fontanella and we have three bone plates. These skulls do not have any bone plate. The whole top of the skull is closed. So that means for me, those skeletons cannot be Homo sapiens or any other known human type. This is one of several skeletons found in Utah, in the United States. Most of these skeletons had also the size between 2.5 and 2.6, 2.7 meters. If they would have found only one skeleton like this, of course, most of the scientists would immediately say that was a, a kind of sickness because also in our days we have several people which a very big size with a very big size of 2.5 meters 2.3 meters but uh, they are really they have a kind of sickness so if it would be just one skeleton i would agree but in utah they found several of them and all together very close in some caves here you have a human dam found in uh, close to Israel. And here is the comparison with the normal on top and this human dump. Also, this human must have been a real big size. This is a drawing of a man, of a researcher from Utah, United States. He found a cave 
and as he didn't bring a camera and he's not using a camera normally, he made a drawing of two mummies he found inside that cave. The man had the size of three meters, red hair and a long beard, and a kind of armor and a big sword, sword with him. The lady was blonde, 2.7 meters, and he brought out of this cave 60 stone boxes, perfect done stone boxes, gave the result of 4,800 plus minus 100 years. Here you see many of the bronze plates, and you can see that the writing, it looks a little bit like the Sumerian writing, but it is completely different. And that's why the eyes of the mass were different. And those, uh, mm -hmm. those uh, stone flutes were very hard to get the right sound. But finally, when the, this professional music player got the sounds, that was incredible sound, incredible sound. Your whole body was in a kind of vibration incredibly wonderful sound yeah. and uh, we made a recording and I got already some requests from uh, some Facebook friends expert on sound frequencies and they asked me to send them the the recording of this sound then they can make the measurement how how many Hertz those uh, sound of the stone flutes are producing. That's another very interesting thing also yeah. for me. I specialize in Hertz. I'm also doing music in 528 uh, Hertz. Uh, and I try to tune, I try to build uh, because also I'm also a musician. So uh, I'm uh, very, in, in Vedic astrology, there is a constellation called Shravana. Uh, Shravana the symbol is the ear and the frequency what coming from the ear. And this kind of people who have disability, they definitely will hear these different frequencies. And they are the most, the best musician in the world. They have this influence of this constellation, Shravana. Shravana is between Capricorn and the Aquarius. So actually, you are fit this constellation <laughs> because we are very close. <laughs> Shravana is, is actually, uh, the, the Capricorn is earth element, which is the, the ground. And the, yeah. and the Aquarius is air, is air. So if you connect air with the earth, uh, this, this is vibration, this kind of vibration, they are, um, they are very good to, to discover. Also many pianists, when they play piano, uh, yeah. I check one uh, Polish pianist, <clears throat> Leszek Mozier, uh, he tuned every forte pian for 432 hertz. And I wanted to know why. So I check his date of birth and the place when he born and the hour. And his money shows Shravana exactly. So this is not, uh, <clears throat> for me, it's obvious that only Shravana can hear, can be very um, intuitive and uh, hear much more than other people. Uh, so this kind of instrument, if you will know the hertz, if you can pass me some uh, hertz information, I will try to figure out what they try to, to achieve, uh, because also every hertz is connected to the uh, part of the body, has different hertz also. <clears throat> if this is connected, if this could be connected with the medicine and healing people, I will know yeah. exactly which, which frequency is connected to which part of the body, and also for other things. Very interesting. I will give you the, the uh, Skype name from Andreas Kerbler in Germany. He is also working with uh, sound frequencies uh -huh. for healing effects. So I think it's very important to connect all our friends because all information, yes. yeah, giving information means you will receive again information, give, give and take. Ne? Yeah. And that's what I try to yes. do, to give my information and then in addition, I get new information. So because love... you, you are, your frequency, 20 or 30 of January. 28. 30, 28th of January. Yeah. So I'm 22nd of January. So it's only, you see, six days difference. Six days. So <laughs> the, our mind is working like, if you give this information into the people and you not hide anything, you will, match, yeah. you will get back a thousand times more. And this yeah. is the philosophy of Aquarius, 
which is typical. And this is really true. And this is really true. And I tell you that I'm trying to help people and tell them how it's work, how our universe work, in my opinion, what I know. And the people yeah. sending me some ancient books, what they found it like 300 years old. So I would, yeah. would never find on any internet. They just copy it and send me as a gift to read it. <laughs> so, yeah. so this is yeah. the kind of example. <laughs> yeah. And definitely for you, people will send you many artifacts from around the world for free because they, they feel that you you sharing your information. So we'll, you will get back. So this is quite, uh, quite uh, exciting also with this. Uh, you know a lot about this and this is for me new area where ah. you are ex a specialist mm -hmm. so that's why i'm really looking forward uh, to sit down with you and exchange a lot oh, yes. of information yes because the vedic uh, knowledge like for example symbols of some constellation yeah. it's it could be uh, helpful very helpful for dating because uh, like we we talked before, uh, Uttara Falguni, uh, the symbol is Sphinx, and and it never be the lion only. That also is connected the goddess head and the body of lion, and that's what we see in Egypt. Uh, uh, what what scientists saying that somebody changed the head of the lion because he didn't yeah. have the knowledge. He could say like this, but this is symbol of. August and September, so there's an influence of August energy and September. That's why connection, both energies. It's a, it's a Uttara Falguni, and she has a specific uh, ability for people who have this constellation in the moon. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I learned a lot. <laughs> uh, on the end of our interview, uh, I was, I would like to invite you into our territory, into Poland, and to, do, to discover the underground tunnels, underground cities it would be very um, exciting if you can come and, and we can do some researches. And before I, I will go come. to Philippines for sure. <laughs> I will come for sure, Gregor, mm -hmm. but you also come here to visit me here. Oh, definitely. That's, that's for very sure. Very interesting. If you tell me when, then uh, I love warm places because I'm also <laughs> some <company>. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I sent you a lot of photos oh, about yes. things we were talking just before. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I will, then you I will can add, it to your listeners. Yes, yes, definitely. I will I will add to our uh, video so that people can watch. And is there one of the uh, picture is it like UFO? Like UFO shape? Oh yeah, many, many of the pictures, of the photos. You have UFOs, you have sun eruptions, you have wormholes, you have a lot of very oh, this, strange things. The sun eruptions, that would be something similar to this uh, uh, circular reset of 676 years. Uh, that could be something really what we can connect because we looking because we don't know yet what happening why the uh, civilization uh, every 700 years <clears throat> restarting with the new new knowledge and old knowledge is when would be forgotten when would be the next one when ending the the last one 2024 2024 oh. they oh. predicting that they predicting because if you um, connect together 2024 uh, but but this is it doesn't really mean it, it, it could be catastrophe it could be something what really changed the world maybe it could be with the, our consciousness our abilities yeah. because as you see as you as you said before also consciousness rising very fast as you can see oh, yeah. yeah so oh, the people yeah. wake up <clears throat> and they don't want to now they can see uh, what is really true, what is really not true, and they can uh, check the artifacts on themselves and uh, connect this puzzle. So the exactly. mind is open. So yeah. once again, thank you very much, Klaus, for your for your time. Uh, I thank you very much, Gregor. <laughs> Always talking, very interesting talking with you. <laughs> yes. I call you soon again on Skype. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Klaus. Thank you. Bye thank bye. You.
拜拜。Bye bye